So I'll talk about this, but the theme, I'd say the theme about 2020 for me, and, and I hope this came across on the show, on the shows over the year, but the theme of 2020 for me is people's epistemology is much worse than I thought it was. People's epistemology is much worse than I thought it was. So people's ability to actually think, to think beyond the binary, to think beyond the us versus them, to think beyond the obvious, to think beyond what they're being fed by the particular media they happen to be consuming. That to me is the most scary phenomena of 2020. All right, Alejandro, now you have to, now you have to figure out what 500 Norwegian krona is in order to add to that amount, but we should be getting very close, very close here to, uh, to 2000. And I am busy copying and pasting all these super chat questions. And now I know we're going to go three hours because just answering all these questions is going to take me forever. If you look at the COVID response, if you look at the election response, if you look at even at the response to BLM, if you look across the board at, 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 the, at people's response to on the right and on the left, to a variety of different cultural phenomena, to a variety of different things, their inability to think about them, their inability to articulate, a, to, to articulate in their own mind, to, to think about what is actually going on, what are the facts, what do they know versus what don't they know. I think 500 Norwegian krona is more than that, Alejandrina, so it, it, it should be, I think, more than 1,600. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought 500 Norwegian. Maybe I'm confusing with a different currency. Um, maybe somebody can do the math. Oh, it's $50. Okay, then it makes sense. Sorry, my confusion. I, I, I you know, my, my, my error. I think I'm, I think I'm thinking of uh, Australian dollars, which is, uh, which is significantly uh, more. The inability to think about facts, think about what are not facts. Nicholas, thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate that. To think about what are facts and what are not facts. What reality and what is not reality. To think about what evidence is. Think about what proof is. Think about what you as an individual know versus you and an individual don't know. I am, guess I'm so disappointed. <laughs> In humanity. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be. Um, I'm so disappointed in people's inability to make those separations. You've seen that with the election fraud issue. You saw that with, uh, again, with, um, with COVID all the time. People not getting statistics. People not getting risk. Thank you, Guy. It's been a while. It's great to see you back here. Thank you for being on the chat. Thank you for the support. Um, it was so disappointing to see in, 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 in people's response to Trump and people's attitude towards Trump, particularly people's attitude towards Trump. You know, and I've known this from day one, but, but over the last year or so, truly, you know, truly disappointing. And again, from a thinking perspective, and again, I'm not talking about everybody who voted for Trump. I'm talking about specifically about the people who were gaga over Trump, who couldn't imagine anything that Trump could do that they would disagree with, that they thought would be wrong. People who viewed it only as a completely tribal issue. I see it with regard to the vaccines, the irrationality with regard to the vaccines. So I guess when, in the past, I'd say mostly, when I looked at a year and I said, what was the philosophical kind of lesson? I'd say, well, uh, on the negative side, I'd say altruism is alive and well. Altruism is everywhere in the culture. I think this year, and this must have been true, it must be always true, right? Because it's not like 2020 uh, people changed. What became real in 2020 is the extent to which the fundamental problems in the world are epistemological. 
a problems of thinking, a problems of objectivity, problems of objectivity and, and, and ability to think rationally and, uh, and, and uh, you know, focus on facts. So to me, that's the big lesson of the year. And even when you think of, when you think of BLM, right? So, so the, the three big stories, I think, this year were COVID, the elections, and BLM. Um, you think about BLM. You think about critical race theory, defund the police, Antifa. I mean, people were buying into that without thinking. And then later, they might have changed their minds because they realized, oh, my God, what does this actually imply? But, you know, because somebody was shot unjustifiably, not, not shot, murdered unjustifiably, killed unjustifiably by the police, because there was a case of police brutality, because the victim happened to be black, the extrapolation from that, on the left, we're all racist. Everybody's a racist. There's systemic racism. The whole world is racist. It, it, not the whole world. The world is fine. It's Americans that are racist. American culture, American society, and it's always been racist. And people just buy into that record. And then going and supporting BLM without doing any kind of research on what they represented and who they were and what they stood for. And there was ultimately a backlash, I think, even on the left against BLM, once people realized that when they were marching, it wasn't just police brutality, it wasn't even just racism. They were marching to do things like defund the police. They were marching to destroy capitalism and bring about socialism. And a lot of people, whoops, changed their minds. But again, jumping on a cause, jumping on a bag wagon, jumping to support something without thinking without evaluating. Racism is bad. Therefore, anybody who puts up a sign saying I'm against racism, everybody jumps on that. Everybody suddenly supports that. Everybody becomes, you know, without thinking, again, without really considering what is going on. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support, or on Patreon, or Subscribestar, or Locals, uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value, hopefully, you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.